Happy on Raw Wednesday for the 15th bloody time. Trying to do this video, I keep running out of space. Right. Hey, happy on Raw Wednesday. Right, I'm drinking. This was full when I first started. So this is the, it started off as a rhubarb saison. But I didn't add the rhubarb in it, just a normal saison. And I like it. Um, I adjusted the grains and adjusted the um, hops for it compared to what I used in the, the other saisons, rhubarb saisons. So I've done the, an extract version and I've done an all grain version. So this one was, I think it was a second brew I've put into the queue. And it, it hasn't got that off taste or smell like my first cube brew. Like a plasticky one. So it does, it, it's, it's alright. So it, I won't make it up with a bad taste. But it's one nice beer. Right amount of bitterness. And the hops, I can't pick them out. So, but I'll tell you what there is. So it's a Saison Cube version. It's come out about 5%. So it's many grades what I've put in, in the other in the other saisons that I've done, rhubarb saison, without the rhubarb. It was 200 grams of rice hulls, two and a half kilos of pills malt. It was supposed to be pills the malt, but I only had bohemian pills now. A kilo of Munich malt, 500 grams of naked oats, 500 grams of wheat malt, 448 grams of sugar, hops. I did 28 grams of Northern Brewer and 30 grams of sad at, sorry, 28 grams of Northern Brewer at 60 minutes, 30 grams of sad <coughs> at 30 minutes and 7 grams of Northern Brew at 30 minutes. Then stuck it in as a cube. Then I added the next set of hops the following day. In, boiled two litres of water up and I steeped some Challenger for 66 minutes. 66 minutes. 66 grams of Challenger and 18 grams of Goldens. But the Challenger was, I had two packs left. So I mixed them both together and there was a different shades of hops considering they from different companies. Someone said they could be not oxidised, oxidised. So I was, if I remember, if I've got a picture, I'll stick it on at the end. And I steeped them for a little while, I can't remember how long I steeped them for. And I used Mango Jack's M27 yeast. Because um, I thought the off flavour might have been, using the Challenger would have been a bit off. But this is going alright. So it's like, a, like it is like an, an orange colour, light orange colour. Oh, that's all right. But I'll, I'll do that again. Um, the rice soles and the naked oats. One of them it just helps with the filtration for when you and also when you're sparging it because the pills in the bolt is quite fan. So, but I will do this one again. Um, so in the kegs I've got the rhubarb extract with the wheat rose malt extract in there and I've got the, the saison in there I did a brew last week I ain't got all the inf information me up I left it on the computer but I did um I'm trying to use up the hops and the grains that I've already got and just trying to find recipes to use them so what I did was I did a, a pilsner a bohemian pilsner with a bohemian with a, a pilsner yeast I can't remember which one it was but I used whole melon hops and I did that in the cube it was a 75 minute boil, so I adjusted the schedule for the hops when he's doing the cube. And I think the first hop addition was maybe 40 minutes instead of being a 75 minutes. Uh, but I think I had a brain fart because brew day, it wasn't too bad. On the, I think it was on the Friday when I did the brew, it wasn't too bad. Cooled it all down. Did what I needed to do the next day, shoved it in because it, it was cold on Friday. So I finished uh, tea time on Friday and I could have put the wort in the fermenter the same night, quite a few hours later, because it had cooled down quite a lot. But I left it until the next day, shoved it in, and I was, I was only 18, 19 litres in the, in the fermenter. And I must have miscalculated somewhat along the line because it was supposed to be like 23 litres. So I was quite miffed that I didn't have the full volume. So it's took, it's in the fridge, the fermented fridge now, bubbling away. 
it's took three foot three days or four days for it to start kicking in and bubbling away. It's down at 12 degrees, bubbling away. So I did a taste when I, when I put it into the fermenter and it was quite bitter. I'm hoping that bitterness goes when I, when I, when I kick it. So you say it's bubbling away now, I'm gonna leave it maybe another couple of days, but I'm gonna dry up it with some more whole melon what I've got left. I think it's about 30 grams I've got left to dry hop it with. But I'm not, I wanna dry up it in the primary to try and save as much as I can in it. Dry up it in the primary, leave that maybe two or three days, then rock it into a secondary, let it settle out, then I'll kick it, then at least I'm gonna try and get some out of it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it comes out all right, but you see, it was quite bitter. But I adjusted the, the hop schedule for the for the cube. What, what it says on there, so it might be just maybe just me. It was too, I'm too eager, or maybe I should have bloody put more more water in to make twenty three liters. But you live and learn. Um, I've had to word. I've I've ordered, I've ordered some more grains and malts. Only because the brews that I want to do, I ain't got the hops or the grains. So I've ordered some torrified wheat, some more chocolate malt, which I thought I had, some challenges and goldens, and some more yeast. I want to make some more stouts. I like my stouts. I also want to make a Russian Imperial stout. Because the ones that I tried a couple of weeks ago, oh, they, they was gorgeous. It was. About, I've only had three Russian Imperial stouts. Since I've been brewing, oh, at, at any time. So, and the first one was for, let's say, from Ant and Rogerson, and the other two, oh, it was, it, was cra it was cracking beers. So, I'm looking forward to doing a Russian Imperial Stout. I may even keg it. I mean, so a bit to be greedy. I mean, so I can have it. But we'll see how it goes. And I've got some, I want to, there's a Ruben Mild I want to do, and the bitter I want to do. The bitter, the Yorkshire bitter I want to do. Is what I did when I first started brewing, and I did it an extract version of it, and I think I did about twelve liters, and I'm gonna try and do maybe a few, a few more liters than that, and I did like that. Just getting something else, so I'm looking forward to them. So I ordered them yesterday. I'm hoping to come tomorrow, then I can do a, do a brew over the weekend, because the shed's cold enough now to stick stuff in the shed to ferment, so. Fingers crossed, we we'll get that grain done. Get them brews, green brews done. Because the pills that I've got in there that fills another keg, so that leaves me three kegs. That leaves me two kegs to fill. I want to get them filled up. Beers. A new little have just opened up next to us. The daughter bought me a beer, and, and son-in-law. I must have label, but they bought me. I would. Craft beers. This is the Ruby Rooster. It's made for Lidl's, but it's made by I can't remember, but the Whitewood, the Hop Goblin people. It's made by them. I checked online, so they've bought me that one, the number four. Got me the the Amber Adder to try. That's number three. Number two is the Green Gecko. RPA and last one was the Yorkshire Gold Hoppy Golden Ale, the Leeds Brewery. But the other three are made by Hobgoblin. So it's, I, I did like, I did like the first one I tried was that one, and I did like it. So that's made me think I want to do my own ruby. So I'm looking forward to that. So no more patches on that end, no more beers. Let's swig this before it goes. Um, I got given what it on there. It's a standard a secondary reducing valve. And I thought said if I said someone said to me, I've got some regulators if you want them. Oh, okay. Me thinking that was one to be have the valve on it and so they set the pressure. These are from obviously pubs. It looks like I think the gas goes in, bottom, then you connect them up. To other, other ones of them, as you go on, you can put like two or three 
on there and you can control the pressure. I don't know if I'm going to use them or not. So you know, I think you gas. I think you gas goes in there. One goes to probably your keg. Then you've got like a little valve here, turn it to reduce the the pressure, release the gas. But there's no gauge on it to say what pressure you've left in it. So you can turn it off or you can turn it on. Same with that like gas on and gas off. But I've got that forward distributor that I'm using, what I need to mark up for my kegs. And that, that does all right. But I say I get a flummox anyway, because I can't, which, oh, which one did that go to? And I'm not sure I got 10 off the wrong one. So I've got two of these. I think there's a primary one and a secondary. So, but I don't know if there's those pushes somewhere else. Connect on there, there's a thread on there. But it's, it's all sealed up in a bag. It's a, a standard secondary reducing valve. So, I don't know if I'll use them, but we'll see. If I get reduced, I'll, I'll let you know. I'm going to purchase it. I bought some um, insulation for the shed, and I can't remember the make of it. It's like rock, rock wool. I bought two rolls of that to stick in the shed, in the, the eaves and the, the gap. I bought some vapour barrier to stick in there as well. So hopefully I can get the shed at a set temperature. Because at the moment, it's, you go in there and it's freezing. And there's condensation on the plugs and that, which I don't really want. So hopefully try and get that done this weekend, insulate it, put a vapour barrier on. Then when I saved up a few pennies, buy some plywood or some cladding, clad it all out. Then it's not going to be big enough to, for a bar. I'm going to spit in there. Big enough for a bar to invite people in. But it just makes it a bit more neat and tidy and not looking like a normal shed. Anyway, I've waffled on. It's bloody 12 minutes long. Sorry for keeping you. It's a, just fast forward if you want. While I will finish my this, go and start my tea. Much appreciated. So thanks very much for watching. And fast forward, thanks very much for fast forwarding all the way through. And I will catch you all soon. And thanks for the new subscribers. And look forward to seeing you all soon. Cheers.